Let's look at uh, implementing many to many. Uh, so, for instance, here we have the uh, enrollment class, right? That is uh, capturing a relationship between lots of students and lots of sections. So, one student can be enrolled in many sections, and you can have many students enrolled in the same section. Uh, now, notice that this is a this is a, a um, an association class, right? So, presumably, it's not only going to have foreign keys to the student and section, but presumably it's going to keep track of other fields. Yes? Right? When we looked at uh, implementing this in a relational database, right, we made the distinction right, that if this were a, um, a simple mapping class that, uh, that, that, that just keeps track of uh, which students are enrolled in which sections, it just suffices to have a mapping uh, table that has foreign keys to both of them. Yes? And the way you would capture it in a relational database, in a, uh, in a in UML, is just only using the star and star. Right? And then you're done. Right? So the implementation, the implementation of, a, of a many to many, right, a UML class diagram, this is enough right, to, to have A and B here. But because we need to convert it into a relational database, we reify this. Right? We reify this and, and create a mapping table. Right? We can't implement this. In, in a non-relational database, we can implement it because this would be an array of, of foreign keys and an array of foreign keys that can actually point to each other. Right? Many, uh, uh, one student can point to many sections that they enrolled in, and one section can point to many students that are enrolled in that section. But in a relational database, you can't do that. Right? So you have to reify it right, by, by adding a mapping table uh, that's going to have a foreign key to each one of these so that you, you implement a one many to many to two one to many. Right? So that's that's the reification step. Now you can implement this in a relational database, right? And you just have a, a mapping table which has foreign keys to both A and B. Okay? Uh, so that's a mapping table mapping. But uh, if you're only capturing which student is enrolled in which section and what students are enrolled in a particular section, this is enough. Right? This, this is enough in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in UML and in a relational class diagram. But if you want to keep track of other things, you, know, you want to keep track of uh, you know, how did the student do while they were enrolled in that section? Right? Uh, you know, how did they, uh, you know, what grade did they get? Right? Uh, then you have to, you know, all those other fields, it's not enough to know what, what student is, is, is related to which section. I want to keep track of this, this other data that I want to keep, that I want to capture. I have to add all those other fields in, in a separate class. Yes? Uh, and, and the way we, we, uh, we said that we would implement that is that we would still have the same mapping table, the same mapping table, but we would just add not only the foreign keys, not only the foreign keys, but we would add all the other fields to that same mapping table. But the nomenclature was that if you didn't have the fields, it's a mapping table. If you have the fields, it's an association table. Just some, just, uh, just nomenclature. Okay. Uh, also to distinguish whether you're going to draw it one way or you're going to draw it the other way. Okay. Anyway, uh, so how do you implement this now in a non-relational database? Now that you do have the arrays. You do have now the arrays. Now, not only can you implement it, you know, the way it was drawn, but you can also implement it this way. You know, now you have more options, right? So, which one would you use, depending what you want to do? Uh, so, there's a couple of uh, of implementations. You can go with the classical way of implementing it, right? You can say that uh, a, you can use the map. You can have a a separate map. That, that has two foreign keys, right? so one that points to the section and one that points to the student, right? where you have a record, an enrollment record, having a foreign key to the section and a foreign key to the student. This is a classical way of implementing it. It's this way, right? Just like we do in a relational database. Yes? But now, because we have uh, arrays are possible now, we don't really need the enrollment, right? If this is not an association, if this is not an association, we could have an array of, of foreign keys. The student can have an array of sections where you have all the primary keys of the sections that, they, that, that that student is enrolled in. Or, from the section's point of view, 
it can point to the students that are enrolled uh, into the into the student. Okay, right, so now you you have more options, right? Which way you would go? So you could go the classical way of using the uh, the uh, denormalized implementation, where you have enrollments pointing to both both the sections and the students, or now you have the well, this is the, impl the actual implementation, right? We have enrollments, and you are pointing, you know, sections of students, you're pointing to two different uh, records, right? One point to this section, one point to the student. But alternatively, right, the students can point to all the sections that they belong to, right? So student one is in enrolled in, uh, in section one. Uh, student two is also enrolled in section one. See that? Right? Uh, but student three is enrolled in two different sections, in section three and section four. Right, it's pointing to two different sections, and student four is taking it easy and not enroll anywhere. Uh, but notice that this creates a, a, a challenge, right? Because uh, the information has to be stored in two different places. Right? You have to, and they have to, they have to coincide, right? They have to keep, uh, they have to be synchronized, right? If you say that student is in section one, well, section one better say that student one is in section one, right? It would make no sense for these not to be the same. So you have a, a bi-directional implementation. And this brings the challenge that you have to update two places at the same time. Right? And, and, and so you, uh, if you have to update two places at the same time, you should avoid uh, this implementation. Unless it's OK for the two to diverge. Right? If it's OK for, that, for the two to diverge, then it's OK. Right? Uh, so, so here's an example of, uh, of enrolling a student from the student's point of view. Um, where you we are um, we are enrolling student um, five A A nine five right that student we are we are in uh, has a sections field in there and we're setting it to have a an array with a single value right so basically we're doing this right student one student one we're creating an, a, an array of sections that has a single value that references a record in the other collection. Yes, so that's that's the uh, that's this uh, this first this this first set right? this first uh, op op operation you were saying students update which student that student we're setting the sections to be an array with a single value so the students is enroll in only in that section Everybody okay now what if they enroll in an, in an additional section right. Um, so what we could do is, is take the old array and we can push into it. So we can add a new value in there. Okay? Uh, so we're saying that the same student, we're going to push into the sections array, which currently it only has a single element. But here we're going to add another element. We're going to point to, we're going to add an additional section. So now the student is enrolled in two sections. Everybody okay? All right? And these would be foreign keys, obviously, right? These would all be foreign keys. Uh, but we have to make sure that that uh, looking at it from the student's point of view has to match what looking at it from the section's point of view, right? And this is where where uh, you perhaps start to say, well, maybe I shouldn't do this, okay? Because how am I going to guarantee that the two are the same? You can programmatically, right? But it it can it can be very error prone. Right? It can be very very error prone. Um, 